Hello, friends. So happy to have you here with me today at Radical Joy. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time with me, well, I'm glad you're here. Each Wednesday, I'm here with you talking about things that weigh on our minds and hearts, hoping if you're dealing with something similar, we can adjust our perspectives as you listen. The more people I meet and the more places I go, the more I realize how important it is to make people aware of the fact that there is no shame in enjoying the parts of our lives that are incredible. It's time for some radical joy. And this week, the three fingers pointing back at me are for soaking it up. (laughs) Just got back from Brazil. Had an amazing time with a couple of friends. Went down there for Carnival. Okay. Now, I had been to Brazil before. I went to the south of Brazil to a place called Porto Alegre to go and visit a buddy of mine I knew from my ship days. Brazilian Superman is what everybody called him on board. He and I were good friends. He's like, James, come down, come to Carnival. We have a good time. I was like, absolutely. Went down, spent an amazing time on the beach with him, met his family, met his friends, had a great time, but we did it more like a local, okay? So this time, whenever I went down, I booked my ticket for Rio de Janeiro, okay? Because I studied my Portuguese. I just whipped the absolute dickens out of my Duolingo for a few months just to make sure when I went down there that I wouldn't be caught unawares, okay? So this time we're in Rio. It's Carnival. We've got this amazing Airbnb that's like three blocks from the beach, Ipanema Beach, don't you know? Had an absolutely incredible time. The people were warm and gorgeous. The beaches were absolutely pristine. The sun beat down on us like it was trying to murder us. Oh, the humidity that my skin after being in the desert for so long just soaked up that moisture in the air. It was just so, so good. We ate, we drank, we had the best time. We went to parades for Samba. We went to see Giant Jesus Corcovado at um, at uh, the Christ the Redeemer. We had the most amazing trip. Well, soaking it up, the reason we're here today, when you go to a, a an eatery in Brazil, or at least in Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro, for anybody that doesn't want to be absolutely ridiculous with the Portuguese pronunciation. (laughs) They will serve you what looks like sawdust on the side of some of the dishes. And it's interesting. It's such a, it's, it's a very foreign concept to a lot of us Americans, especially, or at least it was for me. And I consider myself to be a pretty worldly eater. Like I'm very adventurous. I have zero problem trying something new as long as it's something that's not going to kill me. Okay, cool. Uh, Speaking of, if anybody wanted to do that with food, it would probably be a shrimp. It's not like a lethal allergy, but it's not pleasant. Back to the story. This sawdust looking side dish or um, condiment is called farofa, F-A-R-O-F-A. And it is made of cassava, which is like a gluten-free root vegetable type something, if I'm getting it right. And they pulverize it and they dry it. And I think they mix it with a few other spices. And it's served on the side of mostly like red meat dishes. And also they'll serve it with this wonderful dish called feijoada, which is a bean and beef stew that they serve over rice and pork cracklings and all these other kind of wonderful things, but they don't serve it like that. Feijoada comes in like portions, like you'll have the the beef stew in one part, you'll have the cracklings in another part, you'll have the rice in another part, a shredded green of some sort, which sort of resembles a kale maybe, and then you'll have the farofa. And we looked at it, we're like, what in the world? And and we had to ask a few servers, like, what what is this? Like, me being the weirdo, I just like took it out and just threw it on top. I was like, sure, let's go. Let's figure it out. You know, whatever. I'll give it a try. And if someone sees me doing it wrong, hopefully they'll correct me. Great. Well, whenever you put it on feijoada or on picanha, which is incredible, it's like this slow roasted, beautiful red steak. They, they, they sear it on the outside, and then they will uh, leave it red and juicy and delicious on the inside. And then they will cover it with very coarsely ground salt. And between the heat of the meat, the juice of the red on the inside, and that 
coarse saltiness on the outside. It is basically as close to heaven for red meat eaters as you will encounter on this earthly plane, okay? They will also serve uh, the farofa on the side of a dish like this. And it took me a few tries. I was like, I wonder why this is. Why is this here? What is this thing? And then it dawned on me. Feijoada is basically part. Oh, I keep getting those mixed up. Farofa is va basically sawdust for your food. You sprinkle it on top of everything because it soaks up all of this amazing juice from all of these incredible dishes. And then that way it will make sort of like a paste with the farofa being the base. These juices from this incredible picanha or the feijoada has soaked into this beautiful coarse cassava flour mixture. And then that way, once the stew is gone, once the steak is gone, you don't have to waste any of that glorious flavor because it soaks into this farofa. And all that flavor and juice and delicious and the blood of the picanha will soak into it. So you don't waste hardly any of this glorious flavor from these amazing dishes you've enjoyed in this tropical heat with these beautiful people, with this glorious beverage that you have ordered from this exotic place. And the whole thing just gets consumed. I hope I have painted a descriptive enough picture so that mm, my mouth is watering just talking about it. Oh my God. The entire thing, there is nothing left to waste. We have optimized every single morsel, every drop of flavor and the cassava by itself, the farofa by itself, doesn't really have much of a taste. It is strictly there as a vehicle for the flavor, for this sensation. Mm, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. And I want you to figure out a way. I want all of us to figure out a way of having something like that in our lives so that we can savor every single second of everything to the greatest of our ability. Okay? Because the more I think of that, I was like, and, and initially, here's the thing. Initially, I didn't know what it was for. And I didn't, I didn't explore the purpose of it. I did not anticipate the import of this very simple condiment side dish. I don't even know what you'd call it because neither of those concepts as I know them as a Westerner, as a, as a, as an eater of great enthusiasm, I don't know if either of those really fit. What it is, it's like a Brazilian comparable to sopping it with a biscuit, okay? Because <laughs> mama would make the most incredible biscuits, and whenever you got done with whatever you were eating, you could take a pinch of that biscuit and just sop it in the plate so that you get every drop of every finger-licking delicious and make sure none of that was wasted so that the only thing left on that plate were the little green flowers of the Corel pattern. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I am loving today's episode already, y'all. Ooh, this is just giving me all of the feels from everything. I want to make sure you find something that we can all find something like that in our daily lives so that none of that delicious escapes. So that every drop of that savory goodness goes into our bodies, that we get to consume it in our souls. If it's delicious food, great. I hope you find whatever it is so that you don't waste a drop. If it's an amazing experience, fantastic. I hope you can find a way to make sure that you soak in every millisecond of whatever that is that is nourishing to your spirit.
I want you to find the farofa of your life in every single moment that you possibly can. Because let me tell you something. I didn't know what it was when I started. And I'll be honest, when I don't know what something is, at this point in my life, sometimes I don't stop to ask. And had I not experimented with it because I was in vacation mindset, I might have just completely skipped it altogether. I don't know what this is. Everything else looks familiar. So I'm going to stick to everything else instead of trying whatever this was, and finding the utility in it to make this experience exponentially better for me. What does that look like? Ooh, I may have had too much coffee. Maybe I'm just on a high from this trip. Either way, I am thrilled with where this is going because I think this is something incredibly useful for every single one of us because I keep that in mind now. I've only been back a week or two, but I tell you, whenever I think about it, it's like, yeah, what is it that I can employ in this situation to make sure that I get every single drop of nourishment from it? I'm going to wring it out. I'm going to squeeze it till it screams. I'm going to pinch that penny. I'm going to sop with that biscuit. I am absolutely going to wring it out. And make sure that every drop of nutritive anything in that gets into me. I leave nothing left. No stone unturned. No drop left behind. What does that look like in your life? How can I apply that to my life? What can I do? When I go to the gym, I want to continue to build. I want to continue to lift heavier, smarter, Better form. I never want to go past what I can't do with good form. I don't want to hurt myself. I want to continue to challenge myself so that I continue to get stronger and bigger and more useful. When I'm enjoying a meal that is clearly something that is a masterpiece from the kitchen, whether it hits that nostalgic soul that feeds me on multiple levels, or it is simply just this beautiful creation that the kitchen staff has put together on this plate, brought to my table, and I just don't want to waste a single millimeter, not a drop, not a nothing of it. How do I get the most out of that? When I'm on a trip, have I planned this effectively enough so that I have enough to make me very happy in the fact that I have spent the time and the money to come to this place while filling it with experiences with people I enjoy, yet leaving the space to appreciate and digest everything that I have been able to do on this trip? There are so many ways we can look at this in so many facets of our lives. And I love that being mindful of that continues to work and move me along appreciation, getting the most out of every experience, being alert enough of what I'm doing so that if people want to experience something similar that they can and fully there, there is, on that point, there is nothing more exciting to me than hearing from my friends to say that they are going to a place and would love to know more about what I enjoyed, what I did, how I got there, costs, those kinds of things. A very good friend of mine, whom I hold in incredibly high esteem, wrote me, he says, hey, are you still in Brazil? Nobody, I've been home about a week. Why? What's going on? He's going there. He's an, inc an incredible sound technician. We worked together in the cruise ships years ago. And he's just absolutely one of my favorite difficult friends. And I call him that because he was a little hesitant at first to be as much of a friend that I wanted him to be in my life. Because he, honest to God, he didn't know what to do with me. As y'all might expect, I'm a lot. Basically 20 out of 24, 7. Okay, especially if I've had a couple of cups of coffee in me, especially if we're on a trip, especially if we're on an adventure, my energy is tough to take. Okay, it's usually best you keep me in a crowd setting for like that situation. Well, this amazing friend and I spent a lot of time together in Hawaii 
And we would go on nature hikes. We would go together on adventures that were planned by mutual friends. And it was great because it took a while for him to warm to all of this kinetic that I am. Okay. And this was a few years back where I was probably even more. And eventually it got to the point where we got to be very good friends and he would tolerate my hugs and then he would in initiate the hug. Okay. Amazing. I love whenever friendships move into that. Well, this is the guy that wrote me. He's like, going to Brazil. It's like fantastic. Now he's very active. He's in great shape. He's doing all these things. And he's also got an adventurous soul. Why, in, why else would he reach out to me to ask me about things in Brazil? Right? Of course. So it's like, great. I said, oh, amazing. Here's what you want to eat. Here's what you want to drink. Here's where you want to go. If you're going to be in this city, try this, this, and this. I want to make sure you get to see giant Jesus on the hill, sugar loaf, do the things. Absolutely, yes. Because he has an adventurous spirit, and also because I know that he probably would not do this for himself, I was like, buddy, bud, I'm going to need to make sure that whenever you go to the beach that you make a proud showing for all us American men who want to make sure we do as the Romans do when in Rome. So you're going to need to wear yourself a Speedo. And it's funny, too, because another very good friend of mine did the exact same thing. They went to Brazil not long ago, and they got their PADI certification for scuba diving. And here's a picture of his amazing, goofy grin, all six foot three of him, 220 pounds of just monster muscle, but like... Such a, oh, such a good heart, grinning, and he's standing there next to his wife in his teeny tiny speed I'm like, you better do it. So whenever this other friend said he's going, I was like, great, buddy. You, you, you are absolutely in the kind of shape that I don't think that you would have a problem rocking one of these on the beach. So you're going to need one of those. And he just laughed at me. And I have a few points on my Amazon card. So I went and I found him a sunga, not a brief. You know, not everybody wants to to wear something that brief <laughs> on the beach. Okay, cool. And I got him a sunga, which is more like a square cut type something. And it was very brightly colored. And it was still somewhat conservative in its cut. And it still gave everyone the impression that he was there for a good time, not a long time. And he wrote me when it arrived because I knew it had two-day shipping. He's like, oh, my gosh. He's like, yeah, buddy. Absolutely. And I have every confidence that he is going to wear that on the beach, and he is going to be the man. And I love that. We got to represent. We got to show up, and we got to do as the locals do. And that's part of the farofa. You got to soak it up. Whenever you're someplace like that, you got to do it. If you see it, I want you to experience it. And I want you to do it fully, not through the lens of an American. I know I brought that up several times when we were in Brazil as well. Please try to experience this as a local or someone who really wants to experience it as a local. Because occasionally we have like, oh, well, this doesn't seem right. Or this, I don't understand why this is this way. Or, or even down to the farofa itself. I don't understand what this is here for. This is weird. I don't think I like this. Okay, great. I cannot love someone into doing something like that. What I can do through the medium of this amazing platform that I love to talk with you on every single week, I can say this was my experience and it enhanced it exponentially. The reason I was able to do it was because I just kept trying until I figured it out. And then it made everything so much better. Why? Because it it just, I didn't leave anything behind. I soaked up everything I possibly could from that experience, from that meal, from that trip, from that date. Oh, uh, oh, yes. From that relationship, from that everything, literally everything I get to experience, I want to be more mindful. I feel like a lot of our lives, we're worried about getting something done so we can hurry on to the next thing so we can be productive. Now, if you're not watching the video of this, I just gave you some honking huge air quotes. Productive. 
I don't always love that adjective. I do love being productive. When I feel as though many things on my plate that needed to get completed in a very specific amount of time did. When I'm being productive just to make sure that I get as much packed into a day as possible, I am learning that that is not the definition of productivity. That is busyness. And that doesn't always help us. I got so much done today. Great. At what cost? Because sometimes you need to slow down. I have friends that have the most amazing babies. Oh my goodness. And they are focused so hard on getting so much done. And sometimes I think it is, I, I love that. And I, I pray for their productivity because I know that, especially whenever you've got a very new baby, that you can feel very unproductive because you don't get nearly as much done. Please look at the other side of that. There's only so much time you get in certain areas of your life. Don't forget that. Don't rush through something because you're trying to be productive. Sometimes you got to soak up what you've got at the exact moment that you have it. And you have to revel in where you are and with whom you are sharing the experience and just know that where you are and what you're doing is more than enough. It is sufficient. It is superlative. I was about to ask myself why we always end up here and I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I do. And I'm glad we do. This is where we belong, feeling so much, just over full of these incredible things that happen in our day-to-day -day lives, even though the world tries to tell us and show us, gosh, don't I know it, that there's a lot to be afraid of, that there's a lot going on that we don't have control over. It's my job. It's my mission to remind you that it isn't all like that. <laughs> There's still plenty of in our lives that can be celebrated, that can be relished, cherished, raised up for others to look at, to know that good things are still happening to people as long as we continue to look, okay? And when they do, we have to soak it up and we got to carry it with us and we've got to wear it like a shield because sometimes the rest of the world is going to try to pick at you. Not every time... Is it going to be like an axe swinging at you, a club coming down on you? No, sometimes it's just going to be that persistent little tap. Because any small persistence can still get through even the toughest skin. The smallest river can still dig the deepest canyon. Okay. And we have to soak it up when we got it. All right, we got to live in it. We got to revel. And then we got to make sure that once we've got it, that we continue to tell others about it. We share it. Because whenever I've got it in abundance, which is kind of the way I was feeling 37 seconds ago, that I get here in front of this microphone and I stare down the green light on this camera. And I was like, hey, you know what? We can all have experiences very similar to this. And it will only behoove you to go looking for them. Because if you're looking, you're going to find it, whatever it is. If you're looking, chances are real good you're going to find it. So why not look for the good stuff? And while you're there, soak it up. Ooh, especially that stuff that just sets your heart on fire, that makes your soul glow from the inside that it almost hurts to close your mouth because you just it's hard to fit all that inside. Oh, my gosh, right? We've all been there. I refuse to believe that as souls on this planet that were once joyful and leaping. Now, some of us may have, have, have put that in our past or thought we did. Or the time you can remember it most readily is whenever we were in knee breeches and pigtails, maybe. It never died. It's there.
It's waiting on you to remember it, to feed it, to nourish it, to give it something to soak up so that it can swell in fecundity with that abundance that you have given it. That you have put yourself in a place where you are surrounded by this overmuch of amazing that just continues to pour into you and you grow and you swell and you fill. And what was once pruny and desiccated and dry now starts to flourish again. That becomes this gorgeous, ooh, woo, just, yeah that starts to swell with just this, ooh, okay, what, what I'm seeing in my mind is like, oh, oh, okay, you know those just enormous trees in the Amazon? I'm talking about redwood. I'm talking about those big, lush, green trees with those big, fat, fleshy leaves that whenever it rains, you can literally hear the thump, 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 thump of those giant raindrops in the forest just slapping them. And they come to those really sharp points with the pouring uh, apparatus at the end because they get hit with so much water, they have grown to develop that so that they soak up what they need and the rest just falls off. Exactly. That's what I want to be. I want to be the broad, fleshy, green, so green I'm almost black just vegetative deliciousness that soaks up as much as I possibly can. And then whenever I can't, I have made something to make sure that I don't waste it, but it goes to others so that they can enjoy this incredible nourishment as well. And we can all grow together. Ooh, I wish I had more words for feckend. Because I tell you what, F-E-C-U-N-D. God, that's such a good word. Ooh, that's such a delicious word. It's just like one of those things that's just... I, I have so many beautiful pictures in my mind when the word feckend comes into it. It's like this beautiful woman with these incredible curves that was just made for loving and hugging and nourishing and cultivating both lover and family and those things. And it just makes me happy. It just makes me absolutely over the moon. Feckened in the fact that I have like this giant bowl of fruit that's with grapes just bursting with juice. These enormous pears that when you bite into them, the, the sweet juice just dribbles down your chin. It gets on your shirt. And if it's just too much juice, you take off your shirt and you eat it without your shirt because it's just, I don't want to waste any of that. Even though I got no taste buds on my chest, I want that juice to drip down my chin and get on my skin. I don't want to waste it in the cloth, right? Oh, yes. I want to make sure that even if I can't taste it, that it's still on me somehow. I want to osmos that delicious, sugary, dripping fecundity of all of this that I am consuming. Ooh, I just want to soak it all up. I want to use it to my advantage. I want to grow bigger, stronger, kinder, smarter. I want to just cover the world in the, the embrace the, as far as I can reach, both physically and metaphorically. And I want to just, just, just hug the shit out of them. And whatever I can't soak up, I want to share. Whatever I can't use immediately to make myself this spiritual being, I want to make sure that other people see, hear, feel this incredible vibrational just that I throw out to every single one of you listening. Because it almost hurts, almost hurts. To know that other people may not get to experience this. Maybe I wasn't quite descriptive enough. Maybe I didn't say it quite clearly enough. Maybe I didn't make this whole scenario enticing enough for you to try it yourself. And if that's the case, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I apologize. 
because that's why I was put here. And I am not alone. I have this light. I have this microphone. I have this table and this camera to try my damnedest every single week to push this into the internet so that somebody listening can know it and be set aflame to try to find something like this or some things like this in their own lives so that they can feel this too. We are capable of so much. Our vessels are so big. And I fear that so many of us only get to fill a, a sliver of the percentage of its capacity. And then there are days whenever I'm like, oh my God, if I had to take one more drop of this amazing life I was given, I might just explode and I wouldn't care. Because whenever I do, all I do is just try to pour that out on the people who are around me that will sit still long enough to listen to my ridiculous. Which today, happily, is you. <laughs> oh, oh, I love this time we get to spend together. Radical Joy listeners, I love you. Oh my God. If this is your first episode, thank you so much for joining me today. Was Pinnacle situation. I'm so glad you're here. If this is not your first episode, thank you for returning. I hope this has set you on fire because wow, it definitely put me in an amazing headspace. If you're the type to leave a review, please do so on whatever platform where you're listening. Leave us a five-star review. Take a screenshot. Let us know about it. Reach out to us on social media so that we can send you a sticker to say thank you for getting the word out about Radical Joy. Share us with your friends. If you have other podcast listeners in your life and you think this would be a help to them, please, by all means, and thank you for the faith you have in us, for the message that we try to put out here every single week. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I'm so glad you're here. Love y'all. The bottom line is, use your words, friends. Thank you for joining us again in this moment of radical joy. If this is your first time, we're so happy you're here. Take a moment to check out our archive. See if there's something else that fires you up, rekindles the joy in you. And hey, spread the word if you enjoyed it. We welcome reviews and messages. Let me know what you want to talk about. I rarely run out of things to say. So if there's something on your mind or heart, I want to hear from you. Don't forget, there is no shame in joy. I am not a therapist or a medical professional. If you're experiencing a mental health emergency, please call 911. This content and other content produced by CLW Studios and affiliated partners is not therapy. And nothing in this content indicates a therapeutic relationship. Any opinions of guests on this podcast are their own and do not represent the opinions of James or CLW Studios. Please consult with your therapist or seek one in your area if you're experiencing mental health symptoms. Anything in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Learn more about James and CLW Studios. Follow the link in the show notes. Don't forget to leave a review and hey, we'll send you a sticker. Just send a screenshot and let us know where you want it sent. Have a great week, and we will see you next Wednesday for another dose of Radical Joy. Love y'all.